2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. This known also, that in the last days perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In verse 3, there is one word we are going to focus on today, and that is incontinent. What does incontinent mean? In this context, incontinent means lacking in moderation or self-control, especially of sexual desires. I can confidently say that one of the devil's final plans and tactics in the last days is to instill into the hearts of men and women a lack of self-control. Not just in the area of sex, but in other areas such as drugs, alcohol, food, work, finances, shopping. The enemy is aiming to ensure that people become slaves to passion, slaves to their unrestrained lust. When you look at things happening in the world today, you will see the evil of human beings on the surface of the earth. Some people do something and you wonder, why would anyone do this kind of evil? You see killers, you see thieves, you see fornicators, you see people committing all kinds of sin. And when you look at all of these, they all have one thing in common, and that is lack of self-control. Every sin committed in this world is because of just one thing, lack of self-control. If you see anyone who steals from someone, it is because they cannot control themselves. They cannot control the urge. If you see an adulterous person, it is because they don't have the spirit of self-control. They cannot take their minds off the opposite sex and they end up committing sexual immorality with them. Self-control is an important thing in the lives of people, and without it, evil will abound. Lack of self-control is something which we shouldn't take lightly. You see people who know they shouldn't do something. They know right from wrong, and they even know the consequences of the action, but yet they still do it. You know sleeping with that person won't add anything good to your life. You know after sleeping with them, you will be upset with yourself and wonder why you did it. But yet you still do it. Why? Lack of self-control. You have bills to pay, but you prioritize clothes shopping. Clothes you don't need. Why? Lack of self-control. The devil knows what this means. He knows if he can get the people to lose the fruit of self-control, it will be easier for him to lure them into evil. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.1 that perilous times will come in the last days. We are in the last days, and we are in the times when all the things that are listed in 2 Timothy 3.1-5 through are happening, and we can see them happen. The Bible says we will be without self-control. It means people will let loose self-control, and they will have nothing to keep them in check. If people lack self-control, it means one thing, lack of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit starts yielding fruits in your life, one of the fruits is self-control. Self-control is the result of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. One question you should ask yourself now is, who is controlling my life? This question is not rhetorical. It needs an answer. 
Is the Holy Spirit controlling your life, or is no one controlling it? The mistake you and I make is allowing ourselves to be the driver of our lives. We don't know anything. We are very limited. We cannot compare ourselves with God. Jesus was talking to his disciples about what they will face on earth. Jesus did not lie to them to comfort them, but he told them the truth about life. Life is full of evil. It is full of challenges. Things that can make one lose hope. Jesus told them not to be afraid. John 16.33 These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. But what do we have in the world now? People are being driven by lust and selfish desires. They are being controlled by the devil, and they have not allowed the Holy Spirit of God to take over their lives. This is a perilous time we are in. This is a time that is challenging to every Christian. This is a time that no one wants to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, and this is what the devil is pushing. Who do you want to drive your life? The devil or God? Lack of self-control will push you to say yes to fornication. It will push you to say yes to adultery. It will push you to say yes to pornography. It will push you to sin in your anger. Lack of self-control will push you to make dumb decisions. Without self-control in your life, you will be blown by the wind, and wherever it lands is where your life will be. Paul knew the consequence of not having the Holy Spirit in his life. He knew that it would be a disaster if he could not do what he ought to do. Before, he complained about being led by the spirit of sin, that the things he does not want to do, he found himself doing. Romans 7:15 through to 17, King James Version. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This is the exact thing happening to the people in the world right now. The devil is using the power of sin to strip people of self-control. They are pushed into doing things they don't want to do. They want to say no, but they can't. They don't want to masturbate, but they can't say no. They don't want to watch those unholy things on the internet, but they can't say no. They don't want to fornicate, but they can't say no. They don't want to commit adultery, but they can't say what? They can't say no. They don't want to get into a fit of rage and break stuff, but they can't say no. They don't want to spend money on unnecessary things, but they can't say what? They can't say no. Many people don't like what they do, but they cannot stop doing it. This is the devil taking control of their lives. Do you know how much evil is going on in the world? Do you know the things that people are doing in the world that is destroying themselves? Not everyone wants to do these things, but the devil, the power of sin, is making them do it. Are you lacking self-control in your life? Have you allowed sin to take over you, that you don't even know what you do anymore? This is a perilous time, and the devil is moving, making sure that no one has the power of self-control. You see pastors doing all sorts of immorality with the church members. With church members, not even people outside the church, but with church members. Have you not seen all the scandals of famous Christian leaders in the last two years? All of their scandals have one thing in common, and that is lack of self-control. Lack of self-control is now in the pulpits of our churches. Lack of self-control is in the church pews in our congregation, and lack of self-control is in the world. 
You see Christians doing all sorts of evil to one another, and you wonder if they are Christians, or why are they doing that? This is the devil's final plan, to infuse the world with a lack of self-control. The simple reason is that this is the perilous time that the Bible has talked about, and self-control is vanishing. Paul was unable to control himself until he got the Holy Spirit in himself. Paul was full of sin and would struggle not to do anything the devil tells until the Holy Spirit stepped in and self-control became part of him. He said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. Have you learned to control yourself? If half of this world knows how to control themselves, the world would be better, but the devil will never allow that. What should you and I do at a time like this that the devil is killing self-control in people? 1. Pray for the Holy Spirit of God. Prayer remains one of the solutions to our problems in life. Hannah was barren. She prayed to God and she got a child. Prayer carries power in Christ. If you pray for the Holy Spirit, you will get the Holy Spirit, and you must get the Holy Spirit. Anyone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit at a time like this will find it hard to reject things that they don't want to do. Look at the people who are into sexual immoralities. Look at the people who kill people for money. Not all of them love it, but they found themselves doing it because one thing is missing, and that is self-control, because there is no Holy Spirit to give it to them. God is not stingy with self-control. He will give it to you. Why are you scared to ask God for it? Ask Him for it today, and develop a closer walk with the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to work in you and through you, Self-control is one of the biggest blessings you will ever receive from God. Why? Because it will stop you from making dumb decisions, decisions that will ruin your life. God is looking for those who will stand in these last days and say they will never lose self-control. God is looking for those that will be able to say no to any form of evil and immorality around them. It doesn't matter what it may pay you. It doesn't matter the fame that will come with it. God wants those who can say no to evil. Can God trust you to be a part of them? God is raising people that will choose holiness above every other thing. He is raising people for himself that will never allow themselves to be tossed around by the devil. Can God trust you to be part of these people? Follow Christ and follow the right path.